can and get a mic. Austin. Coach, can you just talk about the growth in your room this year? Um, feels like the, those outside guys have really started to get a lot more confident the last few weeks. The squirrel has made more and more plays, and they've kind of got their focus. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's been the kind of the word of the year is just growth. I think the relieving part about that word is we've yet to peak. Um, so I think, you know, as those guys continue to work, like the best version of themselves, like we'll continue to see. Um, got a bunch of guys in new spots, a uh, bunch of guys that used to new roles. Um, and I think ultimately, you know, that detail, the intensity that it takes to prepare each week, I think just repetition of that over and over is why you're allowing, why guys are becoming more comfortable. And now you've been able to see them make more plays as of late. So I think as they continue to work that plan, that'll continue to come. Rob, Ben Casey. Coach, uh, Dante Boyd, the last couple weeks, has been showing up more and more. Where, where's his, his improvement coming from? And is, 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 do you like him working outside and putting those slots? Yeah, I think uh, we just, we've been able to get him confident, comfortable. Um, I think early on, a lot of that man, like he's a kid that he wants to do so well. Uh, and you kind of, Told that line of like pressing and being aggressive um, and just getting them to calm down and not press so much and just go play football. And I think now you're seeing the confident version of him, which is why he's able to go and make plays. Um, so the plan and practice is continue to do that, continue to keep him confident. That way you can see him relax and play ball on Saturday. Going off of that with Dante, is there anyone that's been in the wide receiving room that he's really been able to kind of take advice from and look up to that's really pulled him along to help give him the confidence that he's needed this season? I think Brew. I think Brew has been awesome for all those guys. He's always in the building. Um, he's in meetings. He's in team meetings. And, you know, as devastating as it was having him go down, um, I think it gave him a bigger voice. He was already a leader of that group, but his voice, I think, being able to speak to those guys. He's helped each and every one of those guys tremendously. Rick Fitzpatrick. Coach, along the same lines, did you see the urgency really start to pick up with your guys when Brew went down? Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, you, you never know when that moment is going to come. That's why you always got to prepare as if you're up next. Um, and so I think there was a, a big wake-up call, not only uh, about the urgency, but just opportunity when Brew went down. So. You see some guys step and make plays. Like Chaz made a couple huge plays the last weeks. Uh, Caleb Webb made a really huge play last week. And Dante and Ramel we talked about. But, you know, it, it's got to create urgency within the group. Um, and I think it has done that. Uh, I think it is an overstatement. You just you, you don't know. You know, we, we play guys in and outside most of the time. Sometimes it could be just getting them in one spot and allowing them to be comfortable, and the game slows down a lot quicker. Um, that's just kind of something. It's kind of case-by-case basis. And over the past few weeks, you've had Dean come into your room from the defense. What's his growth curve been like learning? I don't know how much he played receiver. He's having to learn really a, 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 he's having to learn a whole new side of football. Like, he's been learning defensive terminology, so – He's now on the offensive side, just building him from the ground up, day one foundation. So uh, D's handled that task well. Um, he, he's got, got to continue to do that as the season goes on. But he's been in the building. He's learning. He's asking questions, being a sponge. That's all we can ask for him. So um, it's exciting to have him, him in the room as well. A guy with that type of talent and what he can do with the ball in his hand is always good. Vince? You mentioned the term growth. How does that apply for you as a coach? Um, it forces you to teach in new ways. It forces you to be able to articulate and inspire and motivate in different ways. Like this, the way that Squirrel's motivated is not going to be the same way Jalen Hyde was motivated. Uh, same way with Chaz and Caleb. Like you can't motivate them the same way Brew will be motivated. So I think the biggest part of being a coach is having a voice, um, but also having an ear and knowing when and how to get through to certain players. Um, and with each group, each year is going to look different. Like, each group is going to take on their own DNA. Um, and I think as you continue to get experience with that, that group, I think it ultimately lets you know, like, how guys are triggered and what buttons to push and when to push them. So that's been the biggest growth part for me this year. Ryan and Casey. Did you have any relationship with Dean before you made the change, or have you had to kind of get to know him recently? No, so I'm, I coach him on punt return. So, like, uh, the relationship was kind of – 
you know, seamless. I would like to think I had a good relationship with him, but he uh, he's awesome. He's a great kid on Palm Return. Worked with him there the last two years, so the connection was already there. The only piece building with him was just the terminology. Uh, like I said, he's done a great job of being a sponge and going in and working on and off the field and becoming a wide out now. Going off of that with D, how much of it was him advocating for himself that he wanted to get a chance on offense and how much of it was you just knowing his ability and how he could fit in there? I think, you know, hats off to that kid because his mindset has always been like, I just want to help the team in whatever way I can. Like if he's snapping for or he's a placeholder, like it don't matter. Like his mindset has always been he wants to help the team. So I think once we made the move to him coming to offense, naturally he's excited about that because I think he feels some of his own skill set that could be used over there. Um, and so we're going to try to create some more opportunities for him there. Um, you know, I think that's to be determined. I think, you know, I mentioned earlier, like, I think the best version of his group is yet to be out there. Um, and I, I think as we continue to roll the rest of the season, like we got a long season the rest of the way, I think, man, that's to be determined. Um, I think, you know, just the way these guys have practiced the last couple of weeks, like you're continuing to see guys do new things and become better. Um, so I feel like the jury's still out on that, on that. What can you say about the relationship your wide receiver room has with Joe Milton and some of the more recent success and all of it coming together? Joe does a good job of leading those guys. Um, he's not afraid to hold those guys accountable. He's not afraid to, to take accountability on his own. Um, those guys have done a good job of feeding off each other, talking through things, um, and battling through some, some issues. Um, and I think as we continue to go and that line of communication stays open, I think you'll get the best version of him as well. So he's been awesome leading those guys.